ancient DNA analysis shows the Griffin warrior ruled his Greek homeland. This is uh, a discovery uh, of uh, U.S. archaeologists in the Peloponnese of Greece, the Palace of Nestor. This is by Michael Miller, University of Cincinnati, Fizz.org. Using new scientific tools, the University of Cincinnati archaeologists discovered that an ancient Greek leader known today as the Griffin Warrior likely grew up around the seaside city he would one day rule. The findings are part of three new studies published in the journal Science that examined the ancient DNA of the Griffin Warrior and 726 other people who lived before and during the Bronze Age to learn more about their origins and movements across three continents surrounding the Mediterranean Sea. Led by researchers from Harvard University and co-authored by experts from around the world, the paper demonstrates that between 5,000 and 7,000 years ago, people with ancestry from the Caucasus, a region between the Black and Caspian Seas, moved into Anatolia, now uh, Turkey, Western Turkey, and north into the steppe of Eastern Europe, then around 5,000 years ago, people from Eastern Europe spread out across the European continent and into Western Asia and back to the Caucasus. They joined local populations, creating a tapestry of diverse ancestry from which speak speakers of the Greek, Paleo-Balkan and Albanian languages arose. When we look at the rise of Mycenaean civilization, Mycenae being in the Peloponnese near Sparta, Sparta is in the, the Mycenae area. Uh, we look at the rise of Mycenaean civilization. The ancient DNA supports the notion that it was a local phenomenon, not something imported from the outside, said co-author Jack Davis, UC Classics professor and department head. Davis said the development of the state uh, by the Mycenaean was indigenous, indigenous to Greece. Among the remains studied from ancient DNA analysis, was that of the Griffin warrior, whose tomb was discovered in 2015 by Davis and UC Classics senior research associate Sharon Stalker. Davis and Stalker found the tomb under the tomb under, under a, an olive grove in Pylos, Greece, a coastal city in southern Greece. The forensic examination determined the remains belonged to a young man between 30 and 35 years old, who came from obvious wealth. His tomb contained weapons, armor, and precious artwork, including an ivory plaque emblazoned with the image of a mythical half-eagle, half-lion griffin that gave the warrior his nickname. Davis said, we were interested in the local implications for our interpretation of what we found at Pilos, but also within the border Mycenaean, broader Mycenaean civilization. Archaeology magazine heralded the UC Classics project as the greatest archaeological discovery in Greece in the past 50 years. Their revelations continued UC's storied tradition of exploration in Greece. Previously at Pilos, UC Classics professor Carl Blegen and his Greek colleague Kosantinos Kouroniotis unearthed a palace, the palace of King Nestor, a figure mentioned by Homer in his epic poems. While continuing their work on the Griffin Warrior, Davis and Stalker made a second startling find in 2018 of two nearby gold-covered Tholos tombs, uh, or beehive-shaped family tombs, and like the Griffin Warrior tomb, the Tholos tombs also contained a wealth of cultural artifacts and exquisite jewelry. In 2016, Davis and Stalker turned to former UC Anthropology professor Lynn Shepard's, now at the University of Arizona, to reconstruct the warrior's features. Now additional investigation using ancient DNA is helping to fill the details about the Griffin warrior's life in Greece three and a half thousand years ago. So I guess this is about the time of the exodus of Moses and the tribes of Israel from Egypt. And also about the time of the uh, volcanic eruption of Thera Santorini. So Stalker said he was a young man and wealthy who served different functions, a religious or a sacred function or an outstanding warrior as a leader of his people. He was one of the first kings of Mycenaean Pylos. Until then, there had been complete 
competing aristocratic families, which explains why there were multiple follows tombs, Stalker said. But the Griffin warrior was one of the first individuals to unite all of these functions within society. Stalker supervised the excavations of the Griffin warrior and Tholos tombs. Davis said this research addresses a bigger question about population dynamics. Where did the Greeks come from? We had no way of addressing that question without looking at genetic relationships, Davis said. For the ancient DNA analysis, Davis and Stalker again turned to Shepard's to examine remains. Shepard said, Mycenaean tombs are different to study because their mortuary rituals involved repositioning of skeletons when newer internments took place in tombs that were used over generations. Shepard's co-author of science articles took samples of the Griffin warrior's petrous bone, a part of the skull near the inner ear that often preserves ancient DNA. Ancient DNA is a powerful tool for researchers because it can shed light on how people are tied to each other and the places they lived. You see, researchers have used ancient DNA to learn more about the agricultural practices of the ancient Maya in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. Shepard said, this type of study is critical for our understanding of the ancient history of the region and the role of Mycenaeans in forming that history. Shepard discovered that two Tholos tombs and seven chamber tombs, first uncovered by Blagan and at the Palace of Nestor, contain more individuals than researchers initially realized. Shepard subjected the samples to isotopic analysis to learn more about the diets of the ancient Greeks at Pylos. She found that males consumed more proteins than females. The people interned in the Tholos tombs likewise consume more protein than those buried in the chamber tholos. High protein diets are considered a barometer for good nutrition, which often correlates with status or wealth. These findings correspond with what we know about ancient Greek rituals, she said. She said, for example, the participation of males at feasts where meat was consumed is documented, but the participation of females may have much less uh, may be much less frequent. For us, we're really interested in the relationship between the people buried in the tombs at Pylos and the wider population. Stalker said ancient DNA is the only way to establish these relationships. Ancient DNA also supports what UC's experts have suspected all along. The Griffin warrior was from the region he would later rule. Davis said the new evidence refutes the suggestion that he was an invader or an outsider. Davis said, we've always been skeptical about the theory, but we're able to prove it except through DNA um, analysis. We were not able to prove except through DNA analysis. UC's contribution to the study was made possible in part by Blegen, the former department head of UC Classics, who had the foresight to preserve samples. In Turkey, Blegen showed that Homer's Iliad was based on historical events, including the, sack, the sacking of Troy during the Trojan War. Working at Pylos in 1939, Blegen found more than 1,200 clay tablets with some of the first known European writing dating to 1,250 BC. Blegen's work was interrupted by World War II, but he returned in 1952 to resume his investigation at Pylos and remained in Greece until his death in 1971. Blegen was ahead of his time in understanding that there would be better technology in the future. Stalker said he saved all of the human and animal remains from his excavation so we were able to go back and take samples of DNA that he collected. Likewise, Stalker said, her team has taken steps to preserve excavated material at its sites for tomorrow's archaeologists who likely will have advanced equipment or techniques at their disposal. Stalker said, we're careful, we're very careful about saving intact a portion of what we have. We know advances in technology will be made. It's important to preserve them for future generations to study. Stalker said, ancient DNA analysis is still in its infancy when it comes to anthropological surveys. At the moment, sample sizes are very small for statistical interpretation, 
but she is thrilled about what the research is going, where the research is going. Stalker said, it's definitely an exciting aspect of archaeology. We look forward to continuing our collaboration. This is on uh, uh, by University of Cincinnati on his.org. Let's remember what the Maccabees of the Old Testament said that the Spartans and the people in my scene were from the line of were, they said were the descendants of Abraham. And uh, the uh, Maccabees did ask for the uh, alliance of the Spartans, and the Spartans said that they had found um, the uh, parchment, the uh, written document stating that they had that they were, in fact, relatives of the, the uh, Maccabees because they were both the uh, descendants of Abraham, children of Abraham. So that is in the book of Maccabees in the Old Testament. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.